I really thought I was done with SJ. I really, really thought I was done. But then she goes and tweets this shit right here. Extra biblical support for Jesus' resurrection. Supposedly, anyway. And these are supposedly facts about Jesus from early non-Christian sources that she's posted to as proof of Jesus' resurrection. So I thought I would just quickly go through them and unpack them a little bit. So let's do this. I'll start off by simply reading through the bullet points and adding some of my own thoughts and then I'll dig a little deeper yeah, into each one. So first of all, he existed and they cite Josephus, Tacitus, Pliny the Younger, the Talmud, Lucian of Samosata, <laughs> please forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, Mara Bar Serapion, <laughs> um, Suetonius, Phallus, Blegon, and Celsus. <laughs> Again, uh, you have to forgive my pronunciation. Um, okay, um, he existed. Um, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and let's just say, for argument's sake, that he, that Jesus of Nazareth did exist. But that is not what is being contested. What SJ is trying to prove is not whether or not Jesus lived, but whether or not he resurrected. So let's move on. The next bullet point is, was supposedly born of a virgin and um, Celsus is being cited. Note that word supposedly. Hit the next one. His mother's husband was a carpenter, Celsus again. He lived in Egypt for some time again, Celsus. Had a brother named James, Josephus. And so far, none of these, none of these bullet points prove that Jesus resurrected from the dead. The next one, he had miraculous powers, Celsus. Again, this doesn't prove that he rose from the dead. Practiced sorcery, the Talmud, was a wise man, Josephus, had disciples, Josephus Celsus. His disciples believed he knew the future, Celsus, and of course all that proves is that his disciples believed that he knew the future. He had knowledge of future events. Fliegen or Fliegen, however you pronounce it. His followers considered themselves brothers. So what? <laughs> Claimed to be God. Celsus was worshipped as God by his followers on a fixed day. Lucian and Pliny the Younger. Again, that is just something his followers did. They, his followers worshipped him on a fixed day, but that doesn't prove that he rose from the dead. Was crucified. Josephus, Tacitus, Lucian, Celsus, the Talmud, during the reign of Tiberius, Tacitus, by Pontius Pilate, Josephus, Tacitus died on the eve of Passover, the Talmud. Doesn't prove that he rose from the dead. The next one is that darkness accompanied his death. 
phallus and phlegon. Earthquakes accompanied his death, phlegon. His disciples reported that he appeared to them alive three days after his crucifixion. From Josephus, note that it says his disciples reported that he appeared to them alive three days after his crucifixion. Just because his disciples reported that doesn't make it true. And fin finally, the final bullet point in, in this image is that his followers bound themselves by a solemn oath not to commit any wicked deeds. Well, so what? <laughs> that doesn't prove anything. Anyway, now that I've gone through these bullet points and added some of my own thoughts, I will now unpack these a with, in a little bit more depth. So, the information that I'm going to be sharing with you guys is from an article entitled, Is There Any Evidence for Jesus Outside the Bible? from coldcasechristianity.com Com, and I'll put a link to the article in the description below. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go through the whole article. I'm just going to read and discuss the the relevant bullet points um, that I that, that I've just been looking at. So the first one that I'm going to look at is this one that he practiced sorcery, that Jesus practiced sorcery. That's from the Talmud. So let's have a closer look at what the Talmud says. And according to Cold Case Christianity, they've got the quote here. The Jewish Talmud um, from 400 to 700 AD, it says Jesus practiced magic and led Israel astray. That's from B. Sanhedrin 43a, uh, T. Shabbat 1115, B. Shabbat 104b. Now, that just says that he performed magic. <laughs> but it doesn't prove that he rose from the dead. So we can, I think we can discount that one. So let's move on. The next relevant bullet point that I want to take a closer look at is that he had knowledge of future events. Fliegen. Let's have a closer look at that one. Let's see what Fliegen has to say, or had to say. <laughs> Let's have a look. In the 13th or 14th book, I think, of his Chronicles, not only ascribed to Jesus a knowledge of future events, but also testified that the result corresponded to his prediction. And that's from Oregon against Celsus, book 2, chapter 14. So that is <laughs> that it seems to be a claim that that you know that Fliegen was making in a response to uh, in, in a response to Celsus. So and that and uh, that was around um, eighty to one hundred forty A.D. But that again, does not prove that Jesus rose from the dead. So let's move on. And the next relevant bullet point is that according to Celsus, he, Jesus claimed to be God. Let's have a look. The quote from Celsus, 175 AD, says this, Jesus had come from a village in Judea and was the son of a poor Jewess who gained her living by the work of her own hands. 
his mother had been turned out of doors by her husband, who was a carpenter by trade, on being convicted of adultery with a soldier named Panthera. Being thus driven away by her husband and wandering about in disgrace, she gave birth to Jesus, a bastard. Jesus, on account of his poverty, was hired out to go to Egypt. There, while there he acquired certain powers which Egyptians pride themselves on possessing. He returned home highly elated at possessing these powers and on the strength of them gave himself out to be a god. Okay, so Jesus claimed to be a god. Well, so what? Many people <laughs> claim to be the Messiah or claim to be God in those days. It doesn't prove anything. It doesn't prove that he was a God or, he, or even the God. <laughs> it certainly doesn't prove that he rose from the dead. So let's move on. The next bullet point that we're going to look at in more detail is actually from the infamous Testimonium Flavianum, which means the testimony of Flavius Josephus, which is a passage found in Book 18, Chapter 3 of the Antiquities, which says this, About this time, there lived Jesus, a wise man, if indeed one ought to call him a man. For he was one who, were, who performed surprising deeds and was a teacher of such people as accept the truth gladly. He won over many Jews and many of the Greeks. He was the Christ. And when, upon the accusation of the principal men among us, Pilate had condemned him to a cross, those who had first come to love him did not cease. He appeared to them, spending a third day restored to life, for the prophets of God had foretold these things and a thousand other marvels about him. And the tribe of the Christians, so called after him, still to this day has not disappeared. So, the, on the face of this, this does seem to support the biblical narrative that Jesus rose from the dead. But the reason I referred to this passage as, as as being uh, infamous <laughs> is because it is, is very controversial. It's a very controversial passage and it is widely considered by scholars to be fraudulent, to be fraudulently added by Christians afterwards. Um, so I think we can discount that as being reliable evidence that Jesus rose from the dead. And SJ knows full well that this passage is fraudulent because it has been pointed out to her on several occasions. So I think that she is being extremely dishonest in presenting this as evidence for Jesus' resurrection. And finally, the final bullet point uh, from Pliny the Younger says that his followers bound themselves by a solemn oath not to commit any wicked deeds. Um, well, so what? <laughs> Just because Jesus' disciples committed themselves not to do anything wicked, that does not prove that he rose from the dead. So, none of SJ's points 
um, prove it, prove that Jesus rose from the dead. And yet she rather dishonestly presents them as support for Jesus' resurrection. But, you know, this is, you know, we've, we've come to be used uh, to this kind of deception, <laughs> this dishonesty from SJ. You know, that's just her, 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 her MO. That's how she operates. Um, yeah, she, she, you know, she is often dishonest in her apologetics. And uh, so <laughs> there's no surprise there then. There's no surprise that she would be dishonest here as well. Anyway, I, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, dissection uh, of, uh, <laughs> of SJ's tweet. And if you would like to see more videos like this one, then leave a comment below and give me a thumbs up and do subscribe if you're new. And if you don't want to miss any of my videos, then do hit the bell icon as well. Until next time, thanks for watching. Please like.